Tonight we are going to be um, tagging monarch uh, butterflies and specifically the reason why we're tagging monarch butterflies is to track them um, to Mexico. Uh, these butterflies will be flying south but it takes three generations of butterflies to um, make it to Mexico. Um, so I have some assistance with me today um, and we caught some butterflies but specifically um, the butterfly life cycle starts with an egg, start, goes into a caterpillar, uh, chrysalis, an adult or emergent adult and an adult. So this is basically what all butterflies do in their life cycle. Um, it takes about 32 days from start to finish from egg to an adult um, and we are interested in tracking monarchs because of pollinator species um, we are in our pollinator prairie plot at monona county conservation board in ottawa iowa and um we have planted this plot to encourage pollinators because um, we have one tenth of one percent of prairies left in the state of Iowa uh, because of farming practices and agricultural practices. So um, monarchs are an insect. They have three body parts and six legs and wings. So the head the thorax and the abdomen. Um, so the head has the eyes and the brain, uh, the, the power um, of the body, and there are the six legs and the wings if they're present in the insect are on the thorax, and then the blood and the guts are in the abdomen. So when we talk about um, tagging monarchs, uh, we need to determine whether it's a female or a male. And how you do this is that you have dots, which are pheromone pouches that attract the female. Um, and these guys are males. So the female will not have the dots present. And then sometimes you can also determine the, um, that the females are a little bit bigger than the males. And here is the life cycle, another picture of the life cycle of the monarch. And when they form the J pattern is when they will start to emerge into their cocoon. And then this is the pattern of how they unfurl their wings and be able to fly away. In this stage, they are very vulnerable to predation um, and predators will come after them and collect them for their food. So when we tag monarchs, uh, we want to be able to tag um, these guys with this little tag here and I have the the tags already with me I have 50 tags and tonight we'll use some of them as our um, example and so we want to tag them on the outside of their wing and then this is called the discal cell and that is where we are going to put the tag on that part of the butterfly and so, why do we tag monarchs? So, monarchs are indicator species on how well um, our pollinator plants are growing and rearing them. They're specific to uh, milkweed species. I don't see any milkweed behind me, but um, it's the milkweed species that they go and um, lay their eggs on for the caterpillars to uh, grow into the actual adult. So with science, um, this is a citizen science project that monarchwatch.org has been um, created for. And so if you notice, this is the Rocky Mountain Range. 
Um, anything east of the Rocky Mountain Range will follow this pattern. And they've also figured out that all of these butterflies here in the southern region of the United States will fly across the Gulf of Mexico to Mexico to overwinter in Mexico. And then also, um, all the monarchs that are west of the Rocky Mountain Range will have their migration pattern um, west of the Rocky Mountains. So Rocky Mountains are basically like um, a dividing factor between the eastern monarchs and the western monarchs. And then sometimes they'll stop right here in California before they even get to Mexico because California is a good overwintering spot as well. So they'll stop there. His and so, um, I think what I'm going to do is collect the butterflies that I have in the net and actually show you how to um, tag a butterfly. <laughs> so, this is a very delicate process, um, so to speak, because the butterfly has millions of scales on their wing and we don't want to injure the way the wing of any in any way um because we want them to fly to mexico so um what we do here is with these there is a special code and then i have to put a spreadsheet together and send it to monarchwash.org and um, all that data I'll put in a spreadsheet and then they'll put it into a big database that they have so they can um, use those numbers for tracking purposes. So first I'm going to determine whether it's a male or a female and so this one is actually a male uh, because I see the dot right here on the inside. It's kind of hard to see with um, what we're doing, but if you see that dot, that is indicative to a male. So I found the discal cell, which is right here. It's kind of like, looks like a winter mitten. Um, and that's where I'm going to put this tag. That's not the number I want. This is the number I want. So I'm going to start with 600. Put them on the discal cell. And so then... I will record the number, the day, where the location was of the capture, and um, so I'm just going to put the code here, A, C, J, H, 600, and I'll finish this later. So now is the time where we're going to release the butterfly back into the wild, and there we go. And so that's the basics of being um, a citizen scientist and tagging monarchs. Thank you for your time and watching this video.